Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three or four bedrooms or our story building three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as taroots, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, school, children daycare and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. The assembly now resumes. Please sit down. Yes, we can proceed. I hope you all had a good lunch. <laughs> Information and Communication Amendment Bill 2019 by the Honorable Antonio General and Minister for Justice. Honorable Speaker. Honorable members, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Information and Communications Amendment Bill 2019 be read the second time. Yes. Honorable Speaker, this bill seeks to amend the Information and Communications Act to, inter alia, provide adequate checks and procedures for the monitoring intercepting and storing of information into communications for surveillance purposes. The bill also deletes the draconian criminal provision inserted under Section 173A. Finally, the bill provides legal redress for persons aggrieved with the decision of the minister in exercise of his powers under the Act. Honorable Speaker, I beg that this House adopt this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Second, yes. <coughs> Banjo North. Banjo North, I thought you raised your tag. No, I thought it was going to be some time. But anyway, uh, I uh, can I count one also? Can, can, can. Yes, I move to. Uh, Honorable Speaker, to second the motion and also to contrib make my contribution, my intervention. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, the Information and uh, Communication Amendment Bill 2019, in uh, its objects and reasons, states that it's seeking to amend the Information and Communications Act to inter alia provide adequate checks and balances for the monitoring, my emphasis, monitoring, intercepting, and storing of information into communications for surveillance purposes. Uh, of course, I, I have seen that uh, if you go through it, I'll come to that later, but uh, What it is really doing, I think, as the object states, is to really monitor the
communication activities of uh, people living within the territory of the Gambia. For me, I believe that uh, this piece of legislation, if it is passed into law, will really constitute an institution of the privacy of the people in this country. This is my position. Of course, uh, if you go through it, the, the bill is talking about repealing Section 173A. And of course, uh, there's also a shortcoming. You know, uh, in the bill, you know, uh, we were expecting extracts so that it will guide members to know. Although I've been provided, no, I, was, I managed to get one, but I think it would have been very helpful for others, unfortunately. Uh, but it helps to guide them if the, there was this extract that the, 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 the bill is seeking to, to repeal uh, a part of the, the act, and then for, for, for members to know what part of the act is, is, is affected. Uh, and the minister is saying that the draconian uh, provisions, uh, which states that uh, a person commits an offense if he or she uses the internet to spread false news against the government and public officials inside the satis dissatisfaction, uh, or instigate violence against the government or public officials, caricature, abuse, or make statements, impersonate any public official, blackmail any person, or threaten to... Well, yes, this is fine, as if, if, if this is what it seeks to repeal. Um, but as I had indicated earlier on, for me, I believe that security, talking about the merits, is not to have an apparatus either armed or whatever, to be prying on the privacy of people to protect what? To protect a state, abstract. For me, I believe that security is in the people. The security of any country is guaranteed by the government making adequate provision for its citizens in terms of creating employment for the young, for those that are working to have adequate income that would not even force them to do what? In fact, the earlier, the earlier, the earlier, the earlier bill that was before us, to engage in what they call corrupt practices. I believe that is where security lies. Guaranteeing security is investing in the people. This is my conviction, not having a security force like an NIA, an operators like an NIA to be prying into the privacy of people in terms of their communication with the, the notion that they constitute a threat, a threat to who? So this my, uh, so for me, I can support this piece of legislation if it stopped here, the repealing of 173A. But if it is, if uh, honorable members can go to page one, uh, procedure for interception. A national security agency or investigating authority under section 138 which intends to monitor, intercept, store information, or intrude into communication for surveillance purposes shall make an application to the High Court. So that means they are being given authority. Of course, if you go by this, it is saying that they cannot institute this surveillance, this monitoring, without going to a court of law. That's fine. If you go by this, you will say, well, that's fine. But for me, I don't think they, they, they should even be given, no institution, no official of the state should be given the authority to be intercepting the communication of people. This is my position. Unless the Honorable Minister convinces me, uh, and I would need an explanation, Honorable Minister, that for me, this is really 
um, an intrusion. This is really a violation of the rights of people. The violation of the rights of the person to be doing communication. Of course, I am not promoting, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that people, those who are bent on, 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 on subverting the state, so to speak, should not be taken to task. But I think this should only be the case if there is information to, that, that is sufficient enough to, to, to enable them to, to prosecute a person who is bent on uh, doing something that is inimical to the, the security of the, of the, of the state. Uh, but for me, I'm coming from that premise that for me, I don't believe that security is having uh, an arm, well, 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 well armed armed forces, so to speak. The state must really avert its mind that uh, security is not guaranteed uh, with that notion that uh, activities of some persons or an individual can be threatening to the existence of the state. For me, what constitutes a real threat is uh, the challenges we are facing, unemployment, poverty. These are the security threats. So in other words, Honorable Speaker, uh, I would want the Honorable Minister to convince me that in session of 138A into the Information and Communications Act would not constitute a violation of the rights of individuals by monitoring their communication, performing surveillance, and then seeking for the court's permission to do exactly that to violate the privacy of individuals. So this is my take on this bill, uh, on the merits of the bill, going by the reasons advanced by the object and reasons advanced by the, by, the, by the Honorable Minister, monitoring, intercepting, and storing of information. That they are, this really constitutes a violation. So I would not support this bill if it continues uh, with this provision. So, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, thank you very much. I think it is also very good practice when amendments are brought for copies of the Parent Act, which is being sought to be amended, is made available so that we can do the comparison. So, Honorable Minister, next time, if we can have the copies of the Parent Act so that we can compare. Thank you. <coughs> Honorable Member for Talinding. Uh, we're not following the Oh, process. sorry, sorry, no, no, sorry. <coughs> sorry, it has been moved and seconded that the bill entitled the... Let's see. Information and Communications Amendment Bill 2019, be read a second time. <clears throat> Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. So the ayes have it. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I think we need to read it. The title. Information and Communication yes. Amendment Bill 2019. Thank you. In accordance with clause 67, sub clause 1 of the standing orders, I will now open the floor for debate on the general merits and principles of the bill. So any honorable member who wishes to take part in the debate may do so now. I had earlier on acknowledged um, Talinding, honorable time member for Talinding. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for giving me the floor. Madam Speaker, I would also like to add my voice to the previous speaker and give my support to this bill, Information and Communication Bill. 
Madam Speaker, human rights are rights that every person is born with. Uh, as civil servant or members of public ser servant, everybody is equal. Everybody have a right to associate or to do whatever you want to do as well as it doesn't offend others. Madam Speaker, we all know that social media play a vital role in displaying the information. But some people are abusing this social media, attacking people, government officials, making any kind of character assassination. So I think it's high time for the Minister of Information and Communication to come up with a bill to regulate our information system. This is not a witch hunt or to tamper with anybody's right, but we all have a right and we are all equal. So therefore, one, uh, one must not be given an opportunity to be insulting or attacking others Why people are silent about it. Every, in, uh, in order to help any country to move forward, we need to have a rule and regulation to govern our state. Madam Speaker, for that being the case, I give my support to this bill, and I would also encourage my colleagues to support the bill. Thank you. Honorable Member for Bangal South. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, we will have to take this to committee to thoroughly look at the section. I wouldn't say it is a bad bill, but there might be some sections that we would need to remove from this bill. Madam Speaker, a national security agency or investigating authority under section 138, which intends to monitor, intercept, store information, or intrude into communications for surveillance purposes. Shall make, an, shall make it applicable to the court of law prior to doing so. Madam Speaker, irrespective of how it is done, it is still invasive. And I think people should have a right to their private life and hence to their conversation. Madam Speaker, it might be a good bill when passed into law, but the thing is we need to look at the individual clauses that we will need to remove to at least give the citizens of this country some sort of privacy. Yes, we all know the effect of social media. I am a victim of social media. We all know how they misconstrue. But Madam Speaker, as public servants, we need to be strong enough to be able to handle the effects of social media. That shouldn't stop us. That shouldn't make us come up with laws that would prevent people to exercise their civil rights, Madam Speaker. In as much Madam Speaker, point of protection, observation. Madam Speaker. We also need point, point of to observation, the citizens of this country, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. But we haven't thoroughly looked at this bill. We've, we only received this bill before the weekend. We need time because any law that restricts the civil liberty of people must be thoroughly looked into, Madam Speaker. In as much as we want to protect ourselves, we also need to protect the citizens that we are representing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Member for Sarah Kunda. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. We are dealing with amendments meaning the objective is to address ambiguities in the parent law or absurdities in the parent law. It is therefore important to look at the objects and reasons that has actually been provided for us because uh, they constitute the spirit of the law that should guide uh, the letter. Honorable Speaker, Section 173 has actually uh, tormented quite a number of people when it was promulgated to be a law. What is interesting, Honorable Speaker, even though the aim was to protect government and public officials from false news, incitement of disaffection, caricature, impersonation, blackmail, 
and all sorts, very few people had actually been prosecuted on the deal. And a law that cannot be enforced is no law. So essentially, we just simply get a bad image without achieving the desired effects. Because nothing is more widespread than the very behavior that the law aimed to cop today than ever before. So essentially, it is becoming clearer and clearer that you do not criminalize behavior. What you need is to educate people so that they know how to behave. What you criminalize is what constitutes a real threat to life and property. And essentially, uh, this particular amendment is fit for purpose. It has not served the purpose for which it was intended, and therefore it is absurd. And because of that absurdity, uh, the amendment is right and proper. What is also being introduced needs to be looked at because we are lawmakers. And the law we make should be the law that could be enforced and will serve the purpose that is intended. It is important to look at what the law intends to do. And that is uh, paragraph 138A. If that clause comes into law, does it serve the purpose that the object aims to serve? The object tells us of the need to monitor, intercept, and store information in communication for surveillance purposes. It does not go further to tell us surveillance of what? Is it just surveillance in general or surveillance for a particular purpose? And that is where the object is not very clear. Honorable Speaker, we know as lawmakers we should be guided by principles. And the fundamental principle is that we ought to alert our minds to is clearly stipulated in the Constitution. The Constitution says that there is a right to privacy. And Section 23 asserts that no person shall be subject to interference with the privacy of his or her how? Correspondence or communication, except as is in accordance with law and as is necessary in a democratic society that is the first step, democratic society, in the interest of national security, public safety, or the economic well-being of the country, the country for the protection of health, or morals for the prevention of disorder or crime or for the protection of rights and freedoms of others. So these are the benchmarks that are created so that when we are making law, we remind ourselves that we are dealing with a nation, not just simply a sector of the nation. And therefore, we must look at the law in that respect. Honorable Speaker, uh, a state will have its own security apparatus and it will operate 
What is important is to give the state apparatus mandate, mandate that could be scrutinized to ensure that what they are doing is in the public interest. We have a big difficulty here in terms of what we are being asked to do. We are being asked to get the courts to go to this level of authorizing surveillance. And when rights are tampered with, it is the same courts that must protect the person whose right is being violated. Are we not pushing the court more and more to aid and abet what the executive does and therefore incapacitate the court from being an oversight of excesses of executive authority? Because if the court permits and those who implement go beyond what is permitted and abuse, in fact, the right in that process, how will the court save itself from blame for aiding and abetting that particular action? This is where the difficulty lies. On the other hand, if the law gives that, that, that authority to act and it violates, then the public could go to the courts to handle such violations. So where does the line uh, stop one act which is executive and the other which is judicial. Where do we draw the line? That is really the question that we need to address when we come to scrutinize this particular bill. And we must not push the line beyond what the Constitution has created, a clear demarcation and separation of powers, and therefore to know at what point should the court come? Is it at the level of execution or after the execution to examine uh, what has gone wrong? So how should this uh, provision be formulated? I think is something that is now confronting us and I'm sure uh, all members will exercise their mind and with also uh, the minister introducing the bill so that we do not go beyond that red line that ultimately lead us to get courts to aid and abet what may be a violation of uh, human rights. So, Honorable Speaker, I will stop there by again emphasizing that we are dealing with the national interests not the interest of an executive or a legislature, the national interest. And we should really try to guide ourselves and guard our, 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 our comments. Because we sometimes say, yes, somebody is criticizing the state, but we never say that the people running government are also engaged in the same practices, sometimes giving false news, sometimes engaging in caricature of people, so who is innocent? Who are we protecting? So we must begin to build up national values and protect our national values at all levels. And that is what this assembly must seek to do. It is not focusing on others and excusing others and feeling that others must be protected. No, it's the national interest that must be protected. It's every citizen who must be protected. And if we're going to develop national values, it must be observed and protected by all. Thank you. Honorable member for Cantora. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Um, first of all, before going further, I want to uh, inform this August Assembly that I also joined the previous speaker to give my blessing to this particular bill that is brought for us for enactment. Honorable Speaker, I think uh, the reason stated and objectives is very clear. 
if we go to the last page, page five, it does indicate that this act seeks to address to provide adequate checks and procedures for the monitoring, intercepting, and storing of information into communications for surveillance purposes. And the bill does go further to delete the draconian criminal provision inserted under section 173A. And finally, the bill provides legal redress for persons aggrieved. In essence, I think this is the kudos on the side of executive for making sure that democratic dispensation that all of us are really enjoying, every single person is put into account. Gone are the days whereby draconian laws are used to suppress or oppress people not to have access to information, bringing penalties and criminalizing those information. This bill came to redress such anomalies or such draconian laws by bringing some of the best practice that will make sure that every individual will have a say, every individual can communicate freely. However, state protection does not only end at manning people at the police post or at the border. It goes beyond that. States rely heavily on information gathering. Those information gathering are known as intel or intelligence. It's when the state has access to enough information, they can understand what is going around within the internal jurisdiction of your country to be able to make sure that you come up with policies and decisions to avoid any threat. People should not make mistake that security of a country only lies within the armed forces or the police or the navies. It goes beyond that. Intelligence reports are very key in terms of state security. And one should not be seen undermining that. In as much as the states really want to give out information, or in as much as people want to really have access to information, there is one thing to, to be given the latitude to get or have access to information. But there's also one thing for the state to make sure that they monitor and survey what are you doing with those information aftermath. Is it for positive purposes or negative reasons? In advanced democracies like America and Co, state invests heavily on intelligence. Uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, 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 um, components. They don't undermine that. And the primary responsibility of a state is to make sure that if you are be able to control the internal affairs of a country, it makes you sovereign. But when you lose track of your intelligence, the current happenings in your country, you are going the wrong direction. So I see no cry. If this, or this bill is in breath for us here, that there must be an authority in as much as citizens should have access to information, freedom of expression and freedom of opinion should be guaranteed. But there should be a checks and balances. People should not be only requesting, not taking the responsibility as well. There must be a check and balance to put in place, whereby in as much as you have the right to have information, to have access to information, but there is there should be an agency or institution looking after this information, because information can be destructive. One single communication can turn this country into flame. So such information are very vital for a state to keep putting a day-to-day -day surveillance on them. So in that regard, I think it is not just by manning soldiers, paramilitaries, police force, and co. 
And if you also go to the section 138A, there is no criminal offense that is inserted there that if you are found this, these are the penalties. But what is being given to us is that there must, there must be an authority that will really help the state to make sure that the state is aware, the state knows how these emotions are filtered down, where are they used. So therefore, I think this comes at the right time. Democracy comes with responsibility and it has a price to pay. These are some of the prices of democracy that you cannot shy away from. What is really uh, important is for us to understand that these also contribute, these surveillance mechanisms, this monitoring and this incepting, they contribute heavily in the restoration of the peace and tranquility of this country. This surveillance also goes a long way in terms of averting any threats that might be imposed on this country as a nation. And this surveillance also, or monitoring, will also make sure that we as a country remain sovereign. So therefore, I think, uh, going by the provision of, the, of section 207 and 208, if you look at it, it says that these are related to laws which are reasonably required in a democracy, democratic society in the interest of the national security, public order, and public moralities, and for the purpose of protecting and regulating the rights and freedom of others. The state must be seen doing that, to protect the rights, the rights and interests of others. So therefore, it means that the state should be seen operating as a referee. Once where your rights picks up or where your right ends, that's where another, another person's right begins. So therefore, if the state is not there to make sure that there are checks and balances and serve as a referee, to protect the, the rights of the weak or others, then the state is not doing justice to the, to the nation. So on that note, I don't want to like um, take more time of the assembly. I just want to say I give my blessings and I also we hope that we, we have a, a, a thorough um, introduction at the committee stage. Thank you. Thank you. Latish Kunda Sabiju. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Let me also join the rest of the, uh, my colleagues to observe this uh, very important bill. Well, I won't say that I'm giving my blessing to the bill yet because I believe this is something that we need to look at very, very, very well. We need to commit it to the, uh, the, uh, the committees and then we look, we look at it. Because if you look at what they say, the objects and reasons, they say this bill seeks to amend the Information and Communication Act to interalign, provide adequate checks and procedures for monitoring, intercepting, and storing of information into communication for surveillance purposes. What I want to ask is that if you say monitoring, what are we going to monitor? And how are we going to do this monitoring? I think this is something that is very, very important. We all uh, should be asking. If you want to monitor, what kind of information do you want to monitor? And how are we going to monitor this information is important. If we went further to say intercept, what are you going to intercept? What are the kind of information that you're going to intercept? We need to know those kind of information that are going to be intercepted before we say, yes, I support the bill or I didn't support the bill. If I know all these things, if they are clear to me, then I will be able to take, uh, make a judgment. Because what we have to understand here, look, I am uh, serving as a member of parliament for Latin Kunda Sabiji. Someone sitting at home using the Facebook access, to, uh, using, uh, using social media. We have to do something in, uh, that will not hurt me and that will not also hurt someone who is using the social media. But it has to be based on the fact, as honorable member for Latin uh, Sere Kunda says, we have to protect, uh, protect everybody. This is not a matter of protecting those who work in the government or this is not a matter of going against those using the social media. But what we should look at here is the national interest. That should be the supreme, uh, our, that should be our supreme interest here. Because looking at this thing, sometimes we need to know, we should be clear, how are we going to do it? 
So, uh, honorable member for Banyun says that we need to have the Parent Act. I think that Parent Act, having it in place, is going to help us a lot. Most of us, we didn't have access to the Parent Act. So, you know, if, you, if, you, if I want to say that I'm going to support the bill, if I want to say that I'm going against the bill without knowing the details of the bill, I might make a mistake. But what I will do, I will just support the bill when we go to the committee stage and we know every detail of the bill. Then from there, I'll be able to give my blessing to say yes or no. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I think we'll endeavor to make copies available. Thank you. Um, Central Badigu, thank you. Thank you, Ma. Uh, Madam Speaker, the first part of the objective uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the bill, the object, is not well clear to us because um, it seems like denial of rights, as I'm seeing. And Section 138, the procedure for interception, um, a national security agency or investigating authority under Section 138, which intends to monitor, intercept, store, inform store information or intrude into communication for surveillance purposes, shall make an application to High Court prior to doing so. Madam Speaker, if you go to the Constitution, Section 17, page 21, I quote, fundamental rights and freedoms. The fundamental human rights and freedoms enshrined in this chapter shall be respected and upheld by all organs of the executive and its agencies. The legislature and where applicable to them by all natural and legal persons in the Gambia and shall be enforceable by the courts in accordance with this constitution. Madam Speaker, if you go further, he said every person in the Gambia, whatever his or her grace, color, gender, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, and other status shall be entitled to the fundamental human rights and freedoms of the individual contained in this chapter, or subject to respect for the rights and freedoms of others and for the public interest. But as speaker, by looking at this bill, the first part of the bill, its object, as far as I'm concerned, is unconstitutional. Yes. Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, by going further, go to section 23 of the same constitution, page 25, privacy, subsection 1, no person shall be subject to interference with the privacy of his or her home, correspondence, or communication, except as it is in accordance with law and is necessary in a democratic state, society, in the interest of national security, public safety or economic well-being of the country, for the protection of health or morals, for the prevention of disorder or crime, or for the protection of the rights and freedoms of others. Are we in that state? I don't think there is need for it now. The circumstances where we live in now, there is no need for such a bill. Yes, but there is a need to have a bill you know, uh, to, that is going to repeal the draconian law that we have in our laws. We all will give our blessings to that. But for the, for the, for, for the first part, we see it as a law. <laughs> so, and, and, and Madam Speaker, my colleagues, please let us not have laws that, you know, there are things that are embedded in only to, you know, have a smooth sailing. At the end of the day, we come back again, we want to repeat it. We cannot be only repeating, repeating. Let us not accept it. That's my contribution. Thank you very much. Upper Salum. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, um, first, I must apologize for, for breaking our own rule. Um, maybe you didn't even catch, but... Um, um, you know, our standing order doesn't actually allow me to use this laptop here. But I have to make reference to the previous bills which I downloaded on my laptop, so I want to make reference to, reference to it. Um, uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. When I look at this bill, uh, basically it's two things it's trying to do. One is to correct 
an anomaly in the current Communication Act, and number two, to delete or to remove some draconian laws that most of us actually have been talking about since 2017. Now, currently, if you, if you, if you allow me, Honorable Speaker, to, to, to read from the Communication Act, Section um, 1381, it says the national security agencies and investigating authorities may monitor, intercept, and store communications and the authority when exercising its powers conferred relating to the frequency of monitoring or may otherwise intrude communication for surveillance purposes. That's the current, that's the current law of this country. What this bill, uh, my understanding with the objects, is actually trying to correct that. Because what happened is there is no proper procedure in doing, doing, doing all those things there. And that's the reason why when you look at 137 and, and um, sorry, 138A, it basically clearly tells you the procedures that needs to be followed before this thing can be done. Because right now it's just done, and I don't think in a democratic society this is actually a good law that we currently have in our books. So I think it's important that this thing actually um, should be changed, and that's the essence of actually having this thing today. Now, Honorable Speaker, I also may want to also refer um, uh, ourselves to the AU Convention on um, Cybersecurity and Personal Data Protection. In fact, on Article 8, which Gambia is yet to sign, but on Article 8 also talks about personal data and the scope on which these things can be monitored and stored. It basically tells you a guide. So for me, personally, what I see here is this is basically trying to give the, the government at least a guide on what to do when issues like of security concern actually comes in. It's just a guide, guidance that they have to follow. First, um, uh, who are you to collect this data? Number two, do you have to get permission? Yes, where do you get permission? From a judge. From there, the judge will also know why are you collecting? Who are you collecting from? What is your name? So I think those are all procedural things that um, uh, the law is actually trying to correct as opposed to what we currently have in the Communication Act. Now, we all know about caricature. If, 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 um, if you have to you know, prosecute all people that are doing some caricature on, the, on, on social media, I, I think the, 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 the courthouse will just, it's, it's, it's impossible to do. But that's what we have. So we said, now, you know what, let's remove it. And I think it's important in a democratic society. I'm sure some of you will remember one, one newspaper we had here called, uh, I think it was the Observer. They normally have this thing they call Mr. Owl. Sometimes they, 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 they caricature something. But for me, I look at it as it's fun. You know what I mean? But the current law says, well, if they do it, they, they, could, they could be prosecuted. But we are saying, no, this is, a, this is a democratic society. Let's do away with all those draconian laws, and let's bring in things that would actually help us to think. Let's, 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 let's debate some of these things. And that's exactly what it's trying to do. And that's the reason when you look at uh, um, uh, 138, basically is the procedure for interception. Right now, the current laws, basically there is, no, there is no procedure. They could just jump and then start to monitor you, start to do whatever they want to do with the information. Who, who does? Nothing. But now it's telling you there is a procedure before you can do that. Whether it's the NIA, whether it's the police, or whether whoever it is, this law is telling you that there is a procedure that you actually have to follow. If you don't, then um, what you're trying to collect may, may, may be useless. And for me, that's the, that's the, that's the way actually I see it. But I'm sure when we get to the debate proper, to some of these clauses, well, we can, we can debate and agree on to, to, to do that. But for me, I think, Honorable Speaker, it's important that we have a proper procedure in personal data protection and how do we ac have access to those information is really very important. So that me and everybody else in this country will know, well, these are the right things to do in terms of the security sector. Now, for those of um, us um, who are service providers, also, the law will tell us exactly what we need to do. When do we do that? Because right now, if, 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 um, if Honorable from, um, um, uh, from uh, Binta Karanani, for example, if he files a complaint on the current law, if he files a complaint about me doing certain things with, that himself alone is giving authority to the security agency to monitor what I'm actually doing. That's the current law. But this thing is saying, no, that's not proper. Let's do it in a more democratic way. And that, for me, that's the way I see it. And I think it's essential that we, we change some of our laws when it doesn't really work. Because we live in an electronic age, and things are moving very fast. And the issue with data protection, data ownership, I think is a, is a, is a real, 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 real debate in this world. And um, I think a few days ago, I was one of the panels in, in Berlin talking about internet governance. And this is one of the most critical issues we actually have. How do we govern it? How do, who is the owner? Where is it? And remember last year, I was with some people from the Justice Ministry in, um, in Ethiopia. When I asked the question, the president of Facebook, who owns this data you guys are collecting? Where is the data stored? And the person just stood and said, well, I don't know where it is stored. Who owns it? We can debate it. Can you imagine? These are things that they are collecting from all of us. And they're saying, now the debate is like, who owns the data? Do I own it? Does the Gambia government actually own it? Is it owned by Facebook? Who owns it? 
And just this morning, for those of you that actually use um, Instagram, they've changed, their, they've changed the rules of the game. And they're asking you to agree to continue to use the service. And if you say no, you cannot use the service. And basically, it's all centered around data protection and privacy. So I think, Honorable Speaker, I think this, uh, this is a good thing. But, but I think there is more that needs to be done in this particular act. There is more that needs to be done, especially cybersecurity and personal data protection. There is there's a lot more laws we actually have to change on this particular thing. But at least, again, this is a good start. But I, I expect more from the minister in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Honorable Member for Jara East. Madam, thank you very much for the floor. Uh, I thank the mover for coming up, up with this uh, uh, bill, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, lest we forget that we've come out from a difficult past where freedom of speech was muzzled and where press freedom was thrown under the bus, uh, severely restricted. Madam Speaker, communication is a human rights issue. And it's as old as humanity. We must communicate as human beings. But the extent to which we communicate must be placed under guards and fences. That is, we must have rules and regulations as we relate. Madam Speaker, no one has the right to insult without any reason. And I think this bill has just come to address that, taking into account the difficult past we emerged from. Madam Speaker, journalists played an important role in the development of any nation. Madam Speaker, for far too long, our media infrastructure has been yearning for press freedom, for freedom of expression. And I hope this bill has come to enlarge that freedom as opposed to contracting it. Madam Speaker, we must communicate and we must relate. I have no doubt, after having explained the objects and reasons that this August Assembly will give their blessing, because what I'm doing right now is an act of communication, and we are dealing with communication. So, Honorable Minister, let your fears be allayed <laughs> for the fact that we are communicating, and the bill has to do with communication. Honorable Speaker, Human rights are very important. People must have that latitude to relay their feelings unfettered. But the extent to which we relay our feelings must be guarded. Information is power. Information is money. Madam Speaker, these two variables are very important, money versus power. So there is need for us to draw a fine line. It is my inalienable right to express my opinion. But the extent to which I'm given the liberty to express my opinion must be within the pale of decency, Madam Speaker. It must be within the pale of decency. I have no right to insult your person, but you have no right to insult my person. If I insult your person, I have overstepped my bounds. Humanity is more than that. So there is need to police information before it is dispensed. Because information is like a bullet. Once you release it, you can never get it back. But on speaker, the social media, it will also help us to regulate the social media. Uh, we have right to solve through the net. But the extent to which we solve through the net must be done responsibly. 
it must not infringe on the rights of others. Because where your right stops, that's where mine starts. So you must never be oblivious of the fact that once you vomit a statement, you can never get it back. So there is need for us to be very cautious before we say anything. But I'm speaking that the success of any government is primarily measured by the degree of free speech that is entertained. No government will score a point that is bent on muzzling, that is bent on trying to guard the mouth or the feelings of its citizens. People must be allowed to ventilate their feelings. And one of the ways to ventilate our feelings is to do it responsibly, as opposed to the opposite. Therefore, the lot is on us to do that. Because we belong to the civilized lot. No man has the right to trade invective language against your fellow human beings and unguarded language for that matter. So this bill, Madam Speaker, has come to address such anomalies. Uh, Honorable Minister, I would like to know what constitutes a violation of free speech. I know you will explain it later, but there is need to know the pros and cons. Because some people might have the feeling that even if you are doing your private conversation, it could be termed as going against the grain of this bill. No. There is need for people to have privacy. And I don't think no one has the right to intrude your fellow human beings' privacy. Uh, that's one of my worries. If you can further elaborate, but for the fact that this bill is before this August Assembly, I have no doubt. Because what we are doing now, our work is we are communicating. And I don't think we'll serve as a stumbling block for this bill. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Birkama North, Honorable Member. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. The Information Communication Amendment Bill 2019 has come to make certain amendments in the Information Communication Act. The intent, of course, would be to give us a better law compared to the previous existing one. The objects and reasons advanced to provide adequate checks and procedures for monitoring, intercepting, storing of information into communication for surveillance purposes. And the other, that is the deletion of section 173, that is regarded as a dragonian law, even though we don't have the original text with us. But we are quite comfortable when it is stated that that section is a dragonian law and needs to be deleted. I think I'm very comfortable with that. I see that very positive. Dragonian is negative. That portion of the law is quite negative and is, will not do any positive 
thing on us. And that is very welcoming as far as this bill is concerned. Well, the first part of it, that has to do with communication for surveillance purpose. I think that is related to section 138 or section 3, where 138 has been inserted with the following, with the following subsection, subsections. The word surveillance was quite bordering in the Second Republic. I am one who had never been very comforted because I used to say I had been under serious surveillance throughout. I had been under surveillance. That word alone requires for the relevant committee to thoroughly study the relevant sections under that new section inserted as for how the manner information regarding people or institutions would be subjected to surveillance. We had a very bad experience, and we hope such would not be repeated. It is not my role to be digesting that. I think that's a committee responsible to do that. And I must seriously urge that committee to do your work diligently to give us what the bill intends to do so, better laws. The laws that are not going to be made to suppress, to put the people back again in the culture of fear in this country. My honorable committee or able committee, I urge you to do your homework as far as this particular area is concerned. I share the same view with honorable member for Banjul note. Partly, I see a positive move. I'm very comfortable with the deletion of the Dragonian law, but any area that has to be focusing on intercepting information, trying to put surveillance, is something what, that one has to critically study. And I don't have that legal mind to make my conclusion here. This is an issue of law. If I want to do so, I may not be doing justice to the people and to myself who is ignorant, totally ignorant of law. I'm very much concerned and worried. With that word alone, I was very uncomfortable. And if I still see it, I'll still stand to say I may feel uncomfortable. That's my position. Thank you. Honorable member for Wule East. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, what we are told uh, in this amendment bill is to delete CAP 7403 and insert a new section 138A which deals with the procedure for interception. Uh, 
And the procedure is here. I think many people have looked at it. The National Security Agency or Investigating Authority under Section 138, which intends to monitor, intends to monitor, intercept, store information, or intrude into communications for surveillance purposes, shall make an application to the High Court prior to doing so. This is in short giving the courts to give authority to the state to invade the privacy of citizens. But Honorable Speaker, according to Section 19 of the Constitution, uh, there is this uh, protection of right to personal liberty. liberty. We all know that section, as well as section 23 of the Constitution, which is dealing with privacy. And I read, no person shall be subject to interference with the privacy of his or her home, correspondence, or communications, except as is in accordance with law and is necessary in a democratic society. In the interest of national security, public safety, or the economic well-being of the country. So, Honorable Speaker, if somebody suspects that I have offended him legally, or I have committed a crime, he will see reports to the police, and the police arrest me. Uh, within three hours, they tell me why they have arrested me, and I have a right to a lawyer, and they also continue to do their investigation and take me to court. And there the court decides what they should do, whether to adjourn the case for them to investigate and so on, all that is left to the court. So all those things are here. Yes. Uh, now, Section 25, that is freedom of speech. If you go to Section 25 of the Constitution, it says, every person shall have the right to a freedom of speech and expression, which shall include freedom of press, freedom of the press and other media. B, freedom of thought, conscience, and belief, which shall include academic freedom, and so on. All of that is there. So now, if somebody thinks, I am, I am going to commit a crime, a cyber crime, for example, uh, the case is taken to court for them to give them the power to put me under surveillance. And when they are doing that, I will not be present. I wouldn't know. I've not seen anything here which says the person should be present when they are doing that. But they should communicate to the person. So the courts give them the authority, and they put me under surveillance. And therefore, the state continues to monitor what I say, what I write, and all this without me knowing that they are doing that. That is really a violation of our freedoms. Honorable Speaker, what we are here to do now in this uh, period is to unravel the laws that makes the dictatorship to function for the last 22 years frightening the citizens and silencing the citizenry, the society, instead of turning our country into a democratic state. And I am inclined to believe that uh, this law is just creating a room for state witch hunt. The past regime has done its witch hunt, and this one is also another way of witch hunting the citizens. Even before I do something, 
then I'll be put under surveillance. If the state feels that I've done something, it's their duty to investigate, use all, all these things that uh, were happening. If you commit spread, spreading false news against the government, disaffection, instigate, caricature, abuse, if somebody says somebody is a very ugly person, then, you know, that's a crime. The person is, you know, a bad looking, like a, like a dog, that's also a crime, and so on and so forth. So, Honorable Speaker, I cannot, uh, with my consent, support such an amendment. I would have welcomed the removal of CAP 74, but to put citizens under surveillance, to monitor what they put in their emails, in their Facebooks, in their private uh, laptops, uh, to give permission to people to intrude the privacy of citizens will not satisfy the human rights uh, provisions that we are trying to safeguard. And as a member of the Human Rights Committee of this uh, National Assembly, I cannot uh, give my support to such an amendment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm nominated member, Honorable Gassama. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Uh, this time around, there is a bill titled called Title uh, Information and Communication Amendment Bill 2019. Uh, Honorable Speaker, it is categorically stated in Section 25, Section 25 of the 1997 Constitution that every person shall have the right to freedom freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of tranquility, freedom of assembly, freedom of association, and etc., etc. This is a constitutional mandate given to every citizen of this country. Honorable Speaker, I know the media, they play a the very vital role in this country. And nobody can dispute that. They are very important institution in terms of disseminating information to the public. They play a the very vital role. Nobody can dispute that. But there is one thing is important. One of, one of the philosophers says, all journalists are broadcasters, but not all broadcasters are journalists. It's logic. Everybody wants to be a journalist. Do you have the professional, the ethic of journalism? Do you understand that? That's why we are saying that the information, we need to monitor it. It's important. I'm not saying that we should scrutinize, uh, or we should monitor the information, the communication system of the, uh, of, of the country. Because communication is important. Because any government that exists in this world cannot be operating without information. It's very, very important. It's based on intelligence. You need, to, you need to monitor it. It's important. But I'm not also saying that to suppress. That also is let count that out. You cannot suppress them, because if, the moment you suppress them, 
you are violating their right. That is why the Constitution is always te te telling us that no authority has the mandate to make a new law which may deprive a person of a right that is already acquired. It means that every citizen acquired the same right. We all acquired the same right. That is important. But to deprive somebody's right again, because where, as many people you know, uh, stated here, where my right stopped, and that's where your right begin. It's important. So we all are equal before the law of the land. To say that we need to have a, 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 this thing, a, a, a information and a communication amendment bill 2019. I'm not saying that I'm going to reject it. No, no, no. I, I, I cannot reject it. I'm not also saying that I'm, and I'm, I'm going to support it now. Because I, what I just want to suggest well, to, uh, for us to uh, refer it to the committee for further scrutiny properly. It has to be scrutinized properly. It's important. Because I have a uh, uh, clarification from the minister. I want the minister, if the minister can clarify that portion for me, like uh, monitoring, intercepting. At that portion, maybe I don't understand that portion very well. How to go about it is important for us to be brief before taking any decision on this particular law. It's important there. That's why I'm saying that I'm just making my own suggestion as that of now. But it's important for us to scrutinize it properly. That is important. And for us to also have a, a system, because when, when, that's why we are saying the system change. We need to have a, a better system that is important in terms of disseminating information to the public. It's important. Misleading information can lead this country to anarchy. It's all possible. Misleading information. Let it be accurate information. That is very important. And suppression of the fact can also lead this country to intractable conflict. We need to study these documents very carefully. It's important for the best interest of this country. Let us be nationalists, whatever we are doing, and constitutionalists. Partisan, we put it aside. That is not important as, as far as Gambia is concerned. Gambia is bigger than any of us. Honorable Speaker, I will take my seat. Thank you very much. Uh, Honourable Member for Woolley West. Thank you. Uh, I think we have a problem generally in this country because we refuse to apply principles that we establish ourselves. Somebody raised the question yesterday about whether only the particular bill was gazetted. Now, what is the essence of gazetting a bill? People don't understand that. It's not just for a museum piece. It has a fundamental purpose. It is to make it known to the public that this piece of legislation is going to come. What do you think about it? So that we debate it. <laughs> but tragically, even those who consider themselves literate in this society, the gazette is not accessible to them. So most of them don't even know the existence of the gazette. So there is never a debate about a bill. This would have been an interesting debate publicly. So it means something fundamental has to change. Not only to the gazette, but it must be published in a newspaper. That's what people read, those who are literate in this country. They know all the newspapers. 
So any bill, any piece of legislation that is to come must be published in a, a newspaper before it is discussed in public. So that those who are literate, of course the light public is out of it. Again, my problem. Legislation is not meant for just a class of citizens, it's meant for a people of the country. So everybody must know about a legislation that is incoming. And that's why it is in the Gesset, but the Gesset is only accessible to a few people. Only a few people know about it. So the huge population, the, the, let's say 80 to 90 percent of the people don't know anything about it. And the law is made for everybody in the country, but the, the vast majority of people don't even know about what we are doing here. So otherwise this would not have come here. If it were debated publicly, this would not have come here. Because I'm at pains when I read, you say, uh, the, the Honorable Attorney General said there is a draconian portion that is going to be dealt with. But when I read this, to provide adequate checks and procedures for the monitoring, intercepting, and storing of information into communication for surveillance purposes. If there is not anything draconian more than that, that means I. Anybody who knows this will be afraid to communicate. Because what sieve are you going to use to sieve what is to be stored for surveillance and what is not to be stored? What sieve are you going to use? That is not clear here. And the other thing that we always forget, laws are genetically, no law is meant for punishment. Laws are meant to preempt and guide. But any law which has intent, genetically has intent to punish, is no law. And the fertile ground for any law to survive is information. Those for whom law is meant must understand the generality of that law before it can become law or it can be respected. And we don't do all this. We have radio station, we have a television station. These instruments have never been used to serve the people of this country. These instruments must be used to free, to liberate our people, but they are used to enslave them. Because if you hide information from people, you are enslaving them. So for me, <laughs> the, the objects and reasons are themselves draconian. <laughs> because it stifles my, my, my freedom to express myself. And I don't know which, which measure, which yardstick you are going to use to determine whether what I'm saying, what is bad in it for you to put aside for surveillance and what is not bad. I don't know how you are going to do this. How humanly possible are you going to do this? People are angry by what happens in the forum. But because there is no culture. Culture people. Help people to be cultured. We have to educate people. That is what is going to help us to have a decent society, not laws. Well, like laws don't make any society be decent. Sometimes, in fact, make it, they, they, they increase criminality. Some people are very happy to go to prison because outside is as prison as inside the prison. Two prisons. At least when you are in one, you are protected because at least nobody has access to you. <laughs> the, larger prison, the larger prison is very fragile. You can be attacked anyhow. So if you want to be free from that, you go to the prison where you have no, nobody has access to you. So this is the problem. So madam, for me, this amendment is dangerous. <laughs> it's taking us back to 22 years of that madness. So I think we have to rethink. I'm glad that this is going to be referred to a committee. I'm happy. This is not going to be enacted now. It's going to be defined to a committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, but that is the procedure. Honorable Deputy Speaker.
Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable Speaker, let me inform this August gathering. We were born before computer. So as a result, all these things doesn't bother me much. But, Honorable Speaker, no decent person should insult people and use social media to insult people. Not to talk of insulting people at the highest level is not correct. I'm against it, and then we should try to make sure that we train our kids and put culture into them to do away with this thing. But, Honorable Speaker, this bill, this um, Information and Communication Amendment Bill 2019, Honorable Minister of Justice is here. I think um, this, we need a clarity on this bill. Honorable Speaker, we all remember the past 22 years, what's happened in this country. An institution was given empowered to harass people, to torture people, to kill people. That is the NIA. We all are living witness to that. Now with this bill again, they are saying national security agents to investigate. Who are they? Who are they? They are giving them more power. And they, this bill wanted to take us where we came out. is wrong. Honorable Speaker, is wrong. I think we should not think about this. We should not even think that way in this country now. We are free from that. We all know what's happened. So certainly, this uh, amendment section 138A should be completely removed from this bill, as far as I'm concerned. Should be completely removed. Honorable Minister, with due respect, this, this one should be removed completely. Even if it doesn't go to the committee. I, for one, personally, Honorable Speaker, I, for one, personally, I cannot ma imagine myself to support this type of bill in this country with this new dispensation. I cannot. If I'm insult, somebody insults me, that is rudeness of that person. And as public officers, we are subjected to criticism. Not to insult, but criticism. So as a result, Honorable Minister of Justice, with all due respect, as far as I'm concerned, I cannot, I cannot in any way give power to an institution here which, was a, which, which suppress us in this country, which harass us, which kill us. Because when you talk about uh, national security agents, who are they? Who are they? I take them as NIA. Now they call themselves SIS. <laughs> Gathering information, intelligence, surveillance for us, Gambian citizens at this particular time, in this new dispensation, I cannot imagine myself in supporting this bill. Honorable Speaker, I thank you very much for giving me the floor, and that's my contribution. Thank you. Um, I, actually, the, the next stage is for the Honorable Minister to, to, to oh, yes, nominate just a second. Um, we should um, adjourn at 6 o'clock. It's getting to 5.30, so I would suggest that somebody move so that we just finish today and start off. Can somebody move a motion that we sit beyond six? Um, Upper Salom, thank you. Um, thank you. I'm arise to move a motion for us to sit beyond six o'clock. Call the motion. Observe that I'm not feeling well today, but I have to manage this. Um, thank you. I'm um, seconder. Um, on the, oh, will you have seconded? Oh, I thought he said counter motion. Ah, okay. Thank you. 
yes, it has been uh, moved and seconded that we sit beyond 6 o'clock. Now, I'll give the floor to... Um, no, before the question, Honorable Nominated Member Neyasin wants no, to take... The motion to sit, you didn't put the question. On the for, to sit. Or on the motion to sit beyond 6 o'clock. Yes, sorry, it has been moved and seconded that the assembly sits beyond 6 o'clock. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. So the ayes have it. We can now proceed. Yes, honorable nominated member, Neyasin, have the floor. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, Ma, the information and communication amendment 1990, uh, 2019. Um, the word that disturbs me is to intrude. Intruding, what does that mean? I, I checked the dictionary and then my mind came to this South African athletic when he, he killed his uh, fiancée and we asked him, why did you kill her? She said, he said he thought that it was an intruder. So that being the case, I think if we put something like intrude in our amendment uh, bill, I think we are creating something. Have we forgotten what we used to hear during the TRRC when they say that the security comes to their houses, when they found them in their beds, taking them out? Is that not intruding? And I don't think now the Gambians will allow any security for me, if an intruder comes to my house, I will cut last him or her. <laughs> because to me, it's violating the Constitution. And information sharing, Madam Speaker, is very, very crucial. It's important. We need to share information. Go to the, to the, to the, to the television stations in our, uh, in our neighbors. You, you watch Kucha's show. And we are talking about caricature. To me, Kucha is caricaturing everybody in Senegal, even in the Gambia. So when this happens, is it that we are going to Senegal to bring Kucha here to, 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 to prosecute him? I think these are issues that we really have to talk about. It's true. Nobody wants to be insulted. And I always talk about it here. Insult is not the thing that we need in the Gambia that we know. Not, not only in the Gambia, but everywhere. If you insult somebody, then you are not doing the right thing. But what should our parties do? What should we do as far as politics is concerned? What should we do as far as the Ministry of Communication and Information is concerned? They should come up with mechanisms. They should share information with people. They should communicate with people. If that happens, nothing like this will happen. I think these are the issues, and then many things have been said. I don't want to, I don't want to really repeat myself. But to me, information sharing is what we need. There was a time, just recently, somebody called me, telling me, where are you? I am at home, but I have some, an information to give you, but I am calling you from the telephone, and I want, you to, I want us to meet somewhere where you know that I'll be able to discuss issues with you. So if that being the case, then where are we? Even if we use our telephones to call people is a problem. And as far as we, we, we come up with this bill and amend it and pass it, then we are just creating something else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, at this point in time, may I invite the Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Justice to respond to the issues raised and wind up the debate. Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity to engage. Madam Speaker, I suspect very strongly that because my body bunker sons and in this hall are hungry, they have influence on Julie. All the other honorable members, even though we are having this exchange after lunch, but I blame them nevertheless. And perhaps I should start on a lot lighter note. The Honorable Member for Woolly West is not here, but he raised an important issue about 
I'm putting in the newspapers and radios, the Gazette. And he's absolutely right that the objective of the Gazette is to make a public announcement about the bills that are, um, that are expected to be tabled, to be tabled so that um, it will generate debate. However, I just wanted to share a little um, anecdote about that process. There was a time when my minister experienced um, a lot of delay in advertising certain positions. It was actually for the, um, for the National Human Rights Commission. It took us about a month to advertise the opposition because the newspapers that we were um, used to dealing with would not advertise for us anymore because we owed them a lot of money that was outstanding. And because we couldn't pay, we have to always go back to finance for vehement, vehement, I don't know how to call that. We couldn't advertise those positions. Just to say that while we would ideally like to advertise and do all of the things that are necessary to engage the public, we are constrained by resources. And that was just a little anecdote, anecdote, anecdote to show some of the challenges that we face when we want to publish these things in the newspapers. Um, luckily, you know, they um, understood our situation and allowed us to advertise um, even though we didn't pay at that time and we subsequently settled that. So perhaps maybe we need to encourage members of the media to be more generous and flexible when it comes to government, certainly my ministries, um, interactions with them. But um, more fundamentally, more fundamentally, I think this bill seeks to address two principal issues here. The first one seems to be less controversial. It is for the deletion of Section 173A, um, which I believe um, was um, held to be unconstitutional by the Supreme Court um, last year or maybe end of the year before. But um, that is not controversial. We want to provide the space for um, people to express themselves um, without fear of being prosecuted. I agree with the Honorable Member for Sarah Kunda that um, a law that is difficult or almost impossible to enforce is as good as no law. But the fact that it remains in our statute books continue to provide a threat against the exercise of the right to freedom of speech. And so the deletion basically, I think, um, facilitates um, that environment. Now to the provision on Section 138A, which has generated a lot of animated debate. I blame myself partly for this animated debate because I should, should have ensured that the, that the parent legislation was made available to honorable members, except that I had assumed, honorable speaker, that because this is a National Assembly, copies of these legislations would be here. But I have taken note of the advice, and we will endeavor next time to make sure that we provide the Parent Act. We also have financial constraints in printing us many copies. That is well noted. Honorable Speaker. Um, on Section 138A and our proposal to insert it after Section 138 of the Information and Communications Act is extremely justified. Every intelligence agency around the world gathers intelligence, that's what they do. It's not 
for the benefit of any particular person or group. It's not only to prevent subversive activities against the state, although it includes that. It is simply to fight crime. Crime that comes in different forms, different shapes, particularly modern day crime. Cyber crime, terrorism, transnational crime, money laundering. A lot of the activities that are undertaken to fight crime are not visible to us on a daily basis. They are fought in cyberspace these days, as we all know. And so it is not uncommon for security agencies to have the power to intercept, monitor, conduct surveillance on communications with a view to fighting crime. And that is what section 138 of the information, not 138A, section 138, I'll come to the proposed amendment. I just want to share with the honorable members here the context. I think honorable member for Upper Salem tried his best to explain it, but as I said, it seems as if my body bunker brethren are influencing others. Section 138, subsection one says, and I read, the national security agencies and investigating authorities may monitor, intercept, and store communications. And the authority, when exercising its powers relating to frequency monitoring or otherwise, may intrude into communication for surveillance purposes. Subsection two says, and I will not read all of it, if an alleged threat of murder of physical violence or blackmail occurs, the user or subscriber threatened may in writing authorize the investigating authority to, insert, to intercept telephone conversations, other information and communications, email messages, and any other form of communications on his or her end terminal to investigate and to identify the persons involved in communications within the period of time set in the user's authorization. They already have this power. They can exercise this power based on this law. And that is what has been happening here over the past 22 years under the previous administration. They can tap, they can monitor, they can access your email remotely because they are empowered to do so by the law. And what we are saying now with this proposal is this power is subject to abuse that our law enforcement authorities can in the exercise of their powers here abuse it for their own purposes and if they did all things being equal if they did there's not much any one of us can do because they have this power and it is unrestricted what we want is to provide judicial oversight, a judicial check against the potential abuse of that power. Without this proposal, the law remains the same. They can access, they can tap, they can survey, they can do what they like in accordance with this law and there's nothing anyone can do about it. With this proposal, we are saying they shouldn't be able to do so without an oversight mechanism. And who better to provide this check against abuse? It's the courts. An independent judicial body that can look, if you go through the provisions, you will see the detailed, elaborate procedure that is required for a judge to grant approval for them to conduct the surveillance. And the consequences of not following the judge's order is that whatever evidence is obtained as a result of their activities without the judge's approval may, may be inadmissible in court. That means if they refuse to follow the judge's order or if 
after the enactment of this law, they don't get the approval of a judge and they conduct wiretapping, they conduct um, surveillance, and um, we discover that a crime has been committed and we go to court, we cannot rely on that evidence because it would have been illegally obtained. And so what we are asking you to do is actually to help yourselves. Because without this introduction, they will continue to rely on these powers that they have as provided by the law. That is the point of this new proposal. We want to provide a check against abuse of this power. We want to provide judicial oversight for our intelligence authorities. Because we, like you, are also traumatized by our experience of the previous administration. And so, everything that you have said here about the right to respect freedom of expression and the right to privacy is exactly what this new proposal seeks to reinforce. Not the opposite. Not the opposite. But it's up to you. This is the beauty of democracy. If you feel that this new proposal seeks to limit the right to privacy, well, it's your call. All I can say is that it does not. It has the exact opposite effect. Because as of now, the right to privacy is severely curtailed by this unchecked power that they have. Thank you all, Madam Speaker. Boy, Janno Seekers Restaurant. Yes, I know who be Nina Dimbal, Nimba Domoro Karajano. Domoro Senata, Adiata, Topotoro, Fanan Kendama Bije, Luntan During, Tamala, Abeka Domoro Kijani, Adi Manda Walade, Takawe Bijele, Anim Fanan Kafa Dijang, Ukono Efa, Eka Faminoko Pestri, Anim Bakery, Uko Fanan Bekali. Bad day lomba, conference lomba, workshop lomba, ye four fen ni lomba dunia kono. Domoro better ma, ni lomba international hotel wada number one. Amangke bad domola jam dama. Esa domo jam is atari ya. Awo mupu bandi. Ha. Sain na kuo. Sain na kuo bi. E oto sain na kuo bi musikas restaurant. Dava na jam na muiyat ni manje jorombi jam. Aban. Musikas restaurant known for best quality food and customer satisfaction.